America, my name is I'm Yosef Frimpong, and you're watching this week's edition of the Black Athenians. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody knows to uh, tell all of your friends about the show that we're doing. We're going to be talking about the prison economy. We're going to be talking about the prison economy because what people don't know is imprisoning black people is good for a lot of white business. We're not just talking about your bails bondsmen, which usually aren't black, but we're also talking about, you know, the judges have to eat and maintenance crews. Uh, when you go to talk to one of the prisoners, you don't, it's not like TV where you see them like face to face. You see them through a screen, a big Skype type machine that, uh, that you talk to. I'll show you pictures of it later. But someone has to install that machine and then someone has to maintain that machine. When you put money on your friend's prison uh, commissary, that's not just you give money to the bailiff or whatever. No, it goes through a machine, a machine that needs to be installed. And then someone needs to install that machine and then maintain that machine. Unless those contractors are black, imprisoning black people is just one more good white job. I heard today that in Hinton Clark County, there is a, there's a contract for cutting hair. I heard this a few days ago. There's a contract for cutting hair of all of the prisoners. You would think this is one thing. Cutting black people's hair is one thing we can do. You would think that contract goes to a black guy, but it doesn't. It's contract for a phone company, too. Contract for a phone company. Unless you know a black man who, who owns a major phone company or even a minor phone company, that's another way, that's another person who's eating off of the way we, prison, uh, we, we imprison black people. So let's hit the opening, and we're going to get right into it. The economy of imprisoning black folks. Give it to me. To the beach, oh. Oh, yeah. Good to me. Never change the ways for the world or the government. If it was the president, then I would state facts. You leave it up to me, I'll paint the White House black and it can feature in your front. Very good. My name is Aimee Osei Frimpong, and this is the Black Athenians, where we, give you, we try to give you the quality of political education that will build a black middle class, not just in Athens, but let me tell you, if we can build a black middle class in Athens, it'll also work in Gainesville, Florida, or uh, Georgia. It'll work in Columbia, South Carolina. It'll work in Richmond, Virginia. The more I think about it, the more I believe that Athens is just a little Richmond. Like um, All of the problems here, we just have everywhere else, so we can give you the quality of political education that if we can actually diversify the contracting and the labor and uh, the quality of life, the good quality of life that is in Athens, Georgia, we can help you do it in Columbus. We can help you do it in Statesboro. We can help you do it in Savannah. We can help you do it anywhere. There's a lot of good old white money and a lot of old black poverty. We can help diversify that. So that's the quality of political education we're trying to give here. Hey, hey. Um, oh, oh, I got the wrong line. <laughs> hey, what is this? I, I was looking for the man. Uh, uh, what is uh, this, man? Hey, what, what's up, my man? What is this? I don't know. What, what is this? Speaker uh, I'm an ITP. I'm a speaker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was going next to that restaurant and see that need help. I stand over here last night. Oh, uh, okay. My sister got old time. She's five years old. Yeah, you just, so you just I spoke. I came over here and drank some beer one last night. I ain't got no blood to get home, but look at him. Right. Kill, kill another $3. So, money, you get home, give me some to eat, man. Well, let me, I think, I think we might be able to. Uh, no, I, I need two or $3 to get home. Uh, I got one. Yeah, you got to get home. You know, well, let me see what I want to do. Well, what I want to do is I want you to tell the people your story. Because you're just, you're just regular. Um, All right. Right, right, come here. Come here. Just tell them your story. Right, 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 right,
ten hour for ten hour. <laughs> well, if you give me ten hour, like, like that's so to speak. All right, all right. There you go. All right, so what's the story, my man? Give me five minutes. Where you, where you born? I was born in Athens, Georgia, nineteen sixty four. Good. My mother had seven girls and three sons. My granddaddy was a Callaway, Callaway in Athens. My mama, mama was a Nassau in Buffalo, New York. She was a rod. My mama, mama died at three days. My mama was birthed. Her mama died three days later. My mother didn't have no brother and sister. My granddad was in the first war at 12 years old. He was born in 1896. He taught me the knowledge of the world. world. He in the beloved because the Bible and everything going to be in the world now. At this day I'm speaking, my granddad said, all them country who I will affiliate with World War I and II, who we defeated, they're going to come back and join the government and defeat America. <laughs> they, Korea, <laughs> Korea, Russia, all them countries, not our allies, to join the government and strike. The terrorist attack is already him. They're in our neighborhood. They, they're right here in the ass. They're right here in the state of Georgia. You don't know who the terrorist. He can be black. You'll be quiet. Right. But let me tell you what we're going yeah, through. Yeah, I want to know what's well in your life and yeah. then what, what? No, I tell you political. This about political. Yeah, political. Now, political is, now, in Athens, Georgia, as black people, Amer yes, America, I forgot black, black people. Give it to me. The people who control Georgia is slow to the north and the west coast of the country. Georgia always been a slavery activity racial time. Which Savannah, all that we love, daughter, it was slave, had slave plantation. Savannah ain't from him. Augusta, all them country cities you see around Athens, in Athens, it's Ku Klux Klan and rest of people. And from day one, it's been like that all over the world, in, in New York, Chicago, California. Some people tell me that California is a different city than I got. No, they're different. But you know what? The whites use a very high intelligence over the blacks. They ain't wearing the whites and seat over their body. They're wearing plain clothes, get in the system, be in the jail, get in the military, <laughs> get in the hospital, get in the fire, all of them in the society everyday life with the black people. But when that time comes, for Donald Trump trying to make a deal with Korea, all them country we defeated what my grandfather told me as a child. He said, Jerry, he died at sick with no chemo. He, my granddad had drunk beer, told me to focus on the world. He said, treat people as you want to be treated. He told me about the Bible, about Jesus Christ. Right. And he said, about jobs. No, the jobs here. The jobs here for you. What job, are you no, I don't need no job. I'm a government man. I'm an Africa speaker. And I write up for the president of the United States. I had done it years ago. The next president I wrote was Bill Clinton. From Bill Clinton to Nixon, at nine years old, I mean, I feel like with the government, tell the government what the blacks and the poor white folk and the state need. See, this was about the system. As a society of the people from state, men dealing with middle class and poor, then why is it the Republicans get in office and want to overbound? Uh, make us happen. If it wasn't for the plain people who got business, who working, or uh, the economy, they always talk about the economy and death of the world. Let me tell you something. We as the people of America are the economy. Each one of y'all working in the United States as a black man is in the system of the economy. They take some money out to tax. You them money to pay our debt. So long as people are American, American people, Working, then I always account for uh, uh, eco economic growth. And while President Trump himself, he racist. See, so many things been happening on the news and things. The police, police are white police, the residents say the job. Now you got one minute. What? Has anybody, who lies to us? Who lies to black people in the United States? Don't black. Tell the story. The own blacks are dominating to each other. In the South, the blacks in the state of Georgia don't yeah, speak up. The state, or the blacks in the, in, the, in the South don't stick together. But up north, 
and the wax coat, they stick together like the white folks here. There's more present racialism going on in the South than the North. It died down in the North because of the Negroes up there and the Mexican over here and even the China that like Negro uh, uh, to white man. White man don't like nobody, no different race, or black man, the Mexican, or nobody else in the country. They were done trying to send anybody by the way and live as white people. So is it getting better or is it getting worse? It's getting worse. It's getting worse. The street, the blacks robbing the blacks, the white living and gone by the rules, but the blacks are suffering. We're in a, we're in a depression state that the blacks suffering more than the white. The whites and the blacks. White poor people and the black poor people suffering than the middle class and the rich. Thank you very much. Now, I have to go on with my show. Thank you for your peace, my man. Um, he'll give you a penny down the door. Thank you, my man. That's all I'm good, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. That was Athens, Georgia's own. What was your name? One more time. Jerry Brown. Jerry. Jones. Listen. Jones. I need two more dollars. I have enough to give me a cold beer. I'm big thirsty. I want a cold beer. I'm down. That's all we got, bro. Uh, okay. That's all we got, man. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your time, Jerry. Everybody, die. I go to boot table by my shot. Take care, man. All right. Take care, my man. All right, man. Work for his living. That was Athens' own. Born in Athens, raised in Athens. Has been on the east side as long as I have and longer. Like yes. he was here when I was a kid. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's Athens' own. All right, so uh, the prison economy. The prison economy. We got to talk about it because it is you get rich off of black people in, in Athens, Georgia. There's a lot of people who eat off of black failure, off of America's failure to make black people whole, right? So first of all, we're going to talk about the kind of things black people get, get um, arrested for. And I got a video for that. But first, Marcus is going to say his piece. Oh, no, no. All right. So I got a video for that. This is just, just a video of a little bit of black life. It's two minutes. Go ahead. Hit it. I'm not. I just trying to be going to give me my baby or not. I'm trying to put my own child in the car. Don't touch my car. Give me my baby. I'm going to do it. Give me my baby, you can go. I am grown. Don't touch my car, man. Don't touch my car. Move. Stop. Now you're touching and yelling. You still got it on okay? camera? All right. Now, she don't want to give me my baby. I drove up here you for two hours, seat. and she don't want to give me my child. There's you... no car seat yes, in there. Yes, it is a car seat in there, man. Car seat right there. No. Give me my baby so I can go. You don't need to be in my car. It's I a car seat in there. No, yelling. I'm not yelling. I want you to it's give me my child so I can go home. I'm not screaming, but I just want my child so I can go home. Okay, she asked in the car. to put her in. No, she did not. Sophia. Come on, man. I ain't got time to be playing with you. Well, I'm trying to go home. Not a game. It's not well, give me my baby so I can leave. All right. Now you're making her All right. You got all this on camera? We will be showing it to the judge when we get my baby. Okay. Okay, and I give me to give me ten days. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay. So you're not gonna give me my baby? It's not a big deal. For Are you gonna give me my baby car. or not, Melissa? You cannot. Are you gonna give me? Can I see my child? Yes. Okay, well give Stop her to me so I can go me. home. I'm not screaming at you, but you're playing okay. games, and no, I don't I'm feel not like playing games. I tried to open the door and you pushed me. I didn't push you. Yes, it's you on did. camera. If they think I push you, it's on camera. But can I have my child so I can go home? I don't want to keep going back and forth with you. I don't. I'm tired of doing All this. You're always it's doing the most. What can I give? I just tried to put her in. You give her to me so I can go. Don't push me. I'm not pushing you. Just give, him, give me my child. Come on. You give her to me so I can go, man. You ain't got to do this. I'm not doing anything wrong. Come on, Sophia. It's not a big deal. Give her to me. Man, you're not touching my car, bro. That's fine. That's not happening. I don't want you in my car. I don't trust you. I'm not you. getting in I do not car. trust I don't what want you I in my do car. In Nothing. I just don't want you on it. I don't want you to touch it. I know how you are. That's a baby seat. That's not a baby seat. That's okay, a car seat. Let me in. No, you can get Rodney, in your car and leave. Are you gonna give me my child or not? Give it to me right now, it's so I can not go. A big deal. I'm not gonna keep doing this with you, bro. I'm not doing anything. All I did well, was get open in your the car and go home. You what are you me. doing? All, all I did was try to put her in the car. Give me my child so I can go, Melissa. Are you going to give it to me or not? All right, so that was just a little bit of black life, right? This isn't, now that wasn't in Athens, Georgia, but, you know, that happens everywhere. That was black life. And you got to understand that that guy was just trying to see his kid. He drove two hours to see his kid. 
And what she said at the end of the video was very important. She said, why are you yelling at me? And you pushed me. You know, once that lady goes over to one of these domestic abuse shelters or one of these, you know, places with white women with, with masters in social work, um, they're going to try to lock that guy up. They're going to try to lock up my man. Try. They're going to succeed <laughs> I in mean, locking up that man. And we have one here in Athens, Georgia. And you know who's on the board of directors of that of that uh, of, the, of the of the cottage here? Who? The district attorney. Oh. So how like, convenient! How it, convenient! It's also located between the police precinct and the jail. There you go. So she goes in, says, "Well, my man, he pushed me and yelled at me in public in front of my child." This guy's rounded up. He's in jail. Then now once he's in jail, he's, he's in jail. I, I, I too have been arrested. Because um, that's just what you have to do from time to time. Be arrested. There's a great book on there about how it's very important to destigmatize jail. So if you've been in jail, and, and I run into a lot of black men who've been in jail. Regular looking brothers who just, I, I, for some reason or not, usually has something to do with ticking off someone white. Um, they end up in jail for uh, something. So yeah. I just know they're regular people. Yeah, yeah, no, no. People are shocked when I'm like, "Yeah, I was in jail." I was in jail. I was, <laughs> I just been in jail. Like I don't know. All right. So first, first thing first, you can put a list of black, a list of people, good people who've been to jail on one side, and a list of good people who who haven't been to jail on the other side. You'll find Jesus, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Bayard Rustin, me. And a whole, and <laughs> Davis, a whole lot of good people on one side, and then like you'll find like Barack Obama and, and <laughs> Bunchy on the other. So um, I don't know. Hold on, Barack. That's right, Barack. Barack, no, no, no. No, no, no. We would have heard about that. We 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 would have heard about we that. Heard that about like I have never done cocaine. Now Barack Obama <laughs> said he did a little bit of cocaine. I don't know why, but he's never been to jail. I have been to jail, but I've never done the cocaine. So if anybody ever tells you I, I did the cocaine, they're lying. <laughs> They're lying. I'm a teetotaler. I don't drink, smoke, or tithe. So, <laughs> so, so, so I, I'm, I'm really good. I'm really gonna have to go for that lifestyle. That, that tithing part is the good one. <laughs> a lot of people get confused. <laughs> you don't drink, smoke, or tithe. So, um, but I have, I have been locked up. So, uh, once you're in jail, they get you in a few different ways. Just like white businesses, the very entrepreneurial companies, white businesses get you in a few different ways. One of them we're talking about, let's talk about the bond company. Put up a, a map of Athens bond companies. There are a lot of bond companies in Athens. None of them are, are owned by black people. None of them are owned by black people. And we know at least one of them is owned by a, a huge jerk. At least one. At, at least one of them. At least one is owned by a huge jerk. None of them are owned it by may black be, they, It may even be one that uh, makes a reference to a famous spy movie. It may, it may even be the one that makes a reference to a famous spy movie. Uh, at least one of them is, uh, is owned by a huge jerk. But you know what you need to, uh, to run a bond company? You need capital. You need land, preferably by the jail. Um, you need oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Their office is right also by the jail. Uh, that is, right across the street. I don't think that's an accident. Yeah, you know, they're, 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 they're speedy and accessible. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't think that's an accident. I, you need land, you need capital, enough capital that you could, one, get licensed, because even to be a licensed bondsman is like a huge license. Like, you don't know. For example, about if you want to be a licensed uh, marijuana dispensary in somewhere like Oregon, Massachusetts, or Colorado, I want to say in Colorado, no, in Massachusetts, you need to have $100,000 in cash just holding in your bank account. Oh, to get a license is that all? Dispensary. Yeah, is that all? No, no, not a hundred, a half million. Oh, five hundred, oh. five hundred. Only, only half million dollars. Oh. <laughs> like, in like a cash in your, not like I'm worth. Maybe if I put, but like you need actual like a a, a bank statement that says five hundred thousand dollars to in it before you can get the license. To to. I mean, do you, you have don't to need that much to get arrested for marijuana? <laughs> no, no. In the private market. No. But you need five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand dollars to, um, to to even get a license to dispense it. Yes. So are they now locking people up for not having a license to dispense right. marijuana? Right. So <laughs> drug dealers being locked up for marijuana in Massachusetts. 
They just don't have the five thousand dollars to do it legit. Can, can you be? Can you be a subcontractor? A subcontractor. <laughs> like, no, I'm. I'm just a subcontractor of this dispensary. Yeah, but the dispensary still has to uh, sign off. Sign off. Of- so the question is, can I just be a bail bondsman as a black man with a little bit of money? I do not have a little bit of money. All of it's sunk into this show. Um, but. Can I be a black man as a bail bondsman? No, because I'm going to have to be licensed. And in order to be licensed and to have an office, preferably next to a jail, it's going to take a lot of capital. So we're disproportionately locked up. But someone, and I know this person lives in the White Flight County next door, um, makes a good living being the bondsman for... uh, for for Athens Clark County the jail here. He probably owns a, a few other bond shops. Yeah. Or a pawn shop. Or pawn <laughs> shop. That's, that's another way we, we feed off of black failure. Um so that's one way. Being a good bondsman. Another way. Uh, uh, give me a give me a picture of what people think what people uh, think yes. visiting a person in prison is like. Yes. So when you watch TV, this is what people show you that a visiting a person in prison is like. Right? It's like, you know, you're having a good tete a tete, a conversation across from them, a table. This is what they show you in TV. Now, when you actually go to the jail, what they have is one of these things. If you want to talk to a prisoner in jail, what you can talk, do is talk to, talk to them through one of these. Can you give them a. Yep. The other? Yeah, there you go. It's a contraption. A contraption. So what you're actually doing is talking to them on like something like Skype, where they're on a different machine inside, and you're on the machine outside. And first of all, the person who installed that machine and maintains that machine over, I assume, a secure network? I, I, I would suspect that's probably a secure network. So, I would hope. Yeah, I would hope. So the person who maintains that machine and... Secure monitored network. A secure monitored network. The install that machine, maintain that machine, I do not think it's black. I, I just want to say. Oh, that. it's not in our favor. I, no, according to our wealth numbers, uh, no. Because you need the contract for the jail. You need to talk the jail into contracting you. Because maybe they don't want to contract anybody. You have to them. know, and, and you have to know when they're even looking for the contract. Well, you have to create the need. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty much you have to go to one of the, the deputies and say, like, look, what you really need is to buy my product. So you need to have the juice to create the need for this and then get the contract to um, install, install it. it and then maintain it. Because if you have an install, it's not just a one and done, right? Like I assume they pay a monthly. So someone's playing a nice... Someone's oh, no, 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 no. They're not paying a monthly. Let's just be clear. Oh, the tax mm-hmm. money. <laughs> tax taxpayers are paying a monthly off of uh, what we need to... Uh, you know, so when we calculate that, that, that total it takes to keep a prisoner per day in Athens, Clark County. It includes that. Yeah. That. Now, who's in jail? I have a number. I have a, a nice little chart of who's in jail. Because people say, like, well, you know, white people are in jail, too. In Athens, Clark County jail? Not really. All right. So Athens, Clark County is about 28% black. Right. Of that 28%, I want to say half of them are women. So 14%. There are probably a few more women than men just because that's how things work out. So we're down to 13%. 13% of athens Clark County is black males. Right? 62? Yes. I want to say 62% of the jail population is black males. So not only are we overrepresented in jail, that means everybody else is underrepresented. And I hear, and this is the, the Latino population is about 10%, 8 to 10%. And oh, Athens, I'm sorry, 64%. 64%. We are 64%. 13% of the black population look like me, black male. 64% of the inmate population looks like me, yeah. black male. I am indistinguishable from the inmates. So... Um, so, and I hear even the white numbers are inflated. Can you put a bigger, big screen? Some people are trying to watch this on their phones. Oh. So you can cover me. Um, and I hear even the, the white numbers are inflated. It's uh, because, and you notice that only two, only two Latino in, uh, Hispanic immig- uh, inmates, which is a little bit of a dubious number because they're 8 to 10% of the population. So if only two are, are noted and this, these numbers were, were, gotten, were, were th- three weeks old. 
So we went, just went through uh, the, the website three weeks. Um, we went through the data as they report it, and, this is, and they report on ethnicity. Three weeks ago, and this is what we found. Now, if only two of them are Hispanic, I suspect the two people who are Hispanic are really, really dark. They're like Sammy Sosa Hispanic. <laughs> and that 127 or 120 whatever number, or how many white men are in jail? Uh, white males are 107. 107. Of those 107, I've heard from multiple people that if you're Hispanic or Latina and, and white-ish, they put you as white. Um, multiple people have told me that. You just need to be like somewhat close to being white, like light Indian. Um, uh, yeah, so that explains the, the, why there are only two bodies, two Hispanic bodies apparently. That yes. and our sheriff did just catch a lot of heat for some of his participation with ICE, yeah. so it, it looks good for him to have those numbers be low right now. <laughs> it does look good for him, unless all of them were deported, which I don't think because there are a lot of like people with their papers in Athens. Um, so, so this is how you eat off of black failure. Through the, the phone calls, the phone calls. I, I remember calling my lady from jail and, she, and getting hit with a $15 bill and I only spoke with her for about 30 seconds. Um, I wasn't in jail in Athens, I was in jail in, in Chicago, but I suspect, I have reason to believe that the... Uh, the inmate phone calls are not cheap here. No. They're no. not 25 cents? No, no, not, not 25 cents at all. Uh, they start with a base fee uh, for the connection, and then you're only allowed to talk for so long yeah. before it has to be initiated again. And do not have your call waiting go off while somebody <laughs> is calling you because I, it thinks you're trying to three-way. And that is a tax to the black community because it's not even the inmate who pays that to. It's the inmate and the person they're calling. The person that, so that's a community-wide tax because a person, a black person's calling is probably black. So, um, so that's a community tax for the failure to make black communities whole, and we criminalize them. And remember this. And remember, I showed you that video about like that guy's probably going to end up in jail as soon as uh, as soon as his lady goes to uh, a, a shelter and says, "Well, he pushed me in the parking lot, and yelled at me." So um, I don't know where the music's coming from. They might be doing some. Yeah, they can't hear it at home. So, um, now what else? Ankle monitors. What I didn't know is, that, give me a look, I was like, oh, you're out on an ankle monitor. That's great. Apparently, you get charged for the ankle monitor. They charge you for the ankle monitor. I don't know how much a month. I'm sure some people in YouTube will tell me how much uh, they get charged a month. But you get charged for the ankle monitor. So even if you get out, if you didn't lose your job for getting in to begin with, you're getting charged a monthly for the ankle monitor. And we do not have a lot of extra money. And frankly, if you have an ankle monitor, you're probably having some trouble maintaining work. Yeah. Like work just loves when you show up with that decoration on, unless you're in corporate America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're allowed to show up with it on. I don't like I don't. So you get we get we get charged for that. And this isn't even like prison exploitation of of prison laborers. This is just people making money off of us. Just like, just like, like just shaking us down. You want to get out? Here's an ankle monitor. Here's your $50 a month fee for the ankle monitor. Parole. Apparently you got to pay for your parole. And probation. And pro probation. Yeah. So tell me how. how so probation um, in, for at least Athens Clark County is a base fee of $30 a month. For the, for the probate. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the person on probation has to pay the probation officer thirty dollars a month, um, or they have violated their pro probation and are thrown back in jail. So you need a steady income. You need a steady income because yep. you yep. can't just keep keep selling things, right? So like, you need to have kept your job, and uh, thirty dollars is a lot of check because we only make. There's a two tier. Um, there's a two tier wage system in Athens. We're pretty much. Black people jobs get paid ten dollars an hour or less, and white jobs and non-black people jobs, non-black non-Latino jobs get paid much more than that. So, so three hours minimal of right. work just to pay for your probation. Not to mention the fact that you have to go probably on a day that your job may not right. decide is convenient. 
Or, and then what are you going to do with your kids, right? This is like baby care. You got to give some money around to get someone to watch your kids, if that's the case. So, um, not to mention pay somebody to take you. Not pay somebody to take you. <laughs> or lift. Or li <laughs> lift. Oh. Well, at least that money comes back because they have a lot of black lift drivers. That's true. Yeah, I have you no sense. Lift. It's not enough to keep up maintain maintenance on the car, but that is something we, we do do. And I, I did someone's taxes who did that last year. Yeah, those numbers are a lot too. <laughs> like when you do the math on the fact that they haven't had taxes taken out, they're not making nearly as much as they think they are. Yeah. And then their car's got a lot of, and then they're taking on risk. But um, so there are all these ways you eat off of black favor. And yeah, the judges got to eat, the prosecutors got to eat, um, the police officers, all those people eat by imprisoning us and sometimes drumming up people to imprison. It's not an accident that the DA is on this, uh, the cottage's uh, board. So who else eats off of Black Fairly that you can think of the, uh, the criminal? And I, I mean, oh, well, I mean, in Athens, Clark County, the sheriff directly, there's a sheriff fee when you bond somebody out. We still don't know what that's for. A sheriff fee. And that's just like this, you bond somebody out. 20? 20 dollars. 20 dollars. 20 dollar fee. That's just extra. Did, did no one could give me a real answer as to, I'm like, what, what is that for? You're like, it's a sheriff's fee. It's a sheriff's fee. The commissary. I went to, went to uh, Athens Clark County to put some money on my friend's commissary. So I went to the jail to put some money on my friend's commissary. I thought I could just write a check to, you know, the, 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 the bailiff or whatever. But no, there's a machine that you can put money on, you use to put money on the commissary. That's the machine, right? I suspect that machine was neither designed, bought, nor installed. installed or maintained by black people. That's a commissary machine. And it's probably, once again, on a private network. And I like none of this. So that's money coming from me. And there's a tax on top of that. So there's... Oh, yeah, I'm sure they took their cut. Yeah. So this is another way that... And I'm sure the person who maintains that machine is neither black and probably like yeah, owns a house, right? It's probably a family business because the only way you get that contract is having is knowing somebody. The only way you get that contract is knowing somebody. So there's a family business that that makes a business off of the imprisoning black people economy. Uh, how else do you? And now we're gonna. I guess we can talk about the Thirteenth Amendment. Go ahead and give me the Thirteenth Amendment. All right, so the 13th Amendment saying that it disallowed slavery except for criminals, right? And this has been abused. And first of all, it's just awful to begin with because it's not as if we say you're a slave now that you're a prisoner. <laughs> like, that wasn't part of what it was to sell weed. Like, that's not, you don't owe anybody your labor. Um, so, and, and I know in Athens, the first time I saw a trustee was in the South, but then Hillary Clinton uh, talk about the time she had slaves as a, when she was in the governor's mansion in Arkansas. They would just come and clean her house, the trustees. Uh, and she said, murderers were the nicest because they're really safe. <laughs> Steal, there's a crime of plash. And she said this in her book, uh, It Takes a Village. She said she liked her slaves. <laughs> so, um, this is Hillary Of Clinton. course she did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, at first I felt weird, but then I felt this is really nice. It help around the house and yeah, you don't have to pay people who work for you. That's great. Tw 20 cents an hour is what they get paid here in Athens, Clark County. Yeah, we still, they still exist. Yeah. I see them at banquets. And, uh, they wash the state troopers' cars. They wash cars. I bet you they do windows. <laughs> so um, that's the labor that if they didn't do, we'd have to actually pay a catering service. So, I mean, technically, we can just call it what it is, just slavery. No, yeah, this is, because that, that, that amendment says no slaves but, and then says the conditions under which we can have slaves. That's punishment for crime. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so we can have slaves. So there are slaves in the United States are the prison laborers. And in California, your, your, your Attorney General, Kamala Harris, your former Attorney General, now Senator, um, office actually, like, advocated for them to pay firefighters you know, a dollar an hour to do that work because they have wildfires out there. Oh, that's they, right. That's yeah, right. She yeah. wanted them out on the front lines in fires because... Her office was like advocating for the right to do this. So that's another way. If not, we'd have to actually tax like the Mark Zuckerberg. There's money in California. We could tax them to actually pay real firefighters to do this work. Um, but instead, we just use our slaves. 
Who we get through our prison. Who we haven't trained, taught anything. I mean, point the hose at the fire. That's all they basically yeah, get. I suspect they do not get better health care when they get the black lung. Mm. I'm inhaling all of that California wildfire. No. <laughs> um, they get that same prison health care that's allowed to tell you that a, while a doctor prescribed you this, we don't think you need it. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so there's an entire economy. Um, you know, a lot of the, the laundry, at least, is done by the prisoners for that 20 cents an hour. But there's a lot of other things, like food, food prep. Oh, we have food distribution companies. I mean... Food distribution companies. None of those food distribution companies are owned by black people. So we could cater. <laughs> like if we wanted to do it. We could lay... Like, and the meals would probably get better. Yeah, and the meals would probably get better. Actually, one of my friends was locked up... And he, one of his jobs locking up wasn't cooking. He's a good cook. So he was like, yeah, they ate pretty good when I was a cook. <laughs> he, was a, he was a good cook. I, well, remember, I don't think he got paid for his, for his cuisine. <laughs> no, no. I, I remember doing, uh, I don't know if they still have this practice. Athens, Clark County used to cut back to two meals on the weekends. I mean, and it's a jail, and, and I don't know, so they might just be bologna sandwiches. Oh, they were bologna sandwiches. Okay, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, they, that's a deal. If you don't know, there are a lot of differences. You learn these things a few times. There's a difference between jail and prison. Jail is where you can hold for up to a year, but then, like, something can happen. You get locked up for a day and then another year. So um, a lot of people in jail have been there longer for a year. Jail is where you get bologna sandwiches. It's, and, like, the accommodations are pretty particularly good. It's, it's kind of it's a cash cow for the, for the county. Prison is where you... You get sent when you're doing longer time. And there, you know, you might have a more robust life, but it's still prison. Um, so, yeah, that's the difference between jail and prison. Jail is not fun. It's baloney sandwiches. It's not a place to, not, have, not a particularly cool place to be. You can speak to your people through Skype. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. If, not even for longer periods of time. Like, I was thinking about that when we went to visit. Yeah, four people a week. They cap yeah, four, people, four a people a week. Yeah, and they, and they don't really do a whole lot to control who those people are. Right. So you know you can hit that cap before anyone has a chance to tell you. Uh, hey, by the way, you need to limit who you're letting in here. Right. Because we can only we're only letting in four people. So there's an entire economy that's based on black failure, and I don't know how I feel about that. Um, actually, I, I know how I feel about that. I don't think people should be, get rich off of the way we imprison black people. Because we imprison black people for a lot of ecological reasons that have to do with the U.S. never actually making the black community whole. Right? So, yeah. Instead of having good jobs, instead of having land, instead of having, you know, the things, instead of being welcome into the labor market they needed us picking cotton and in order to have us picking cotton they locked us out of all the things so that we could up until the 50s 75 percent of the south black workforce were either farm workers or um domestic help domestic help so that's 75 percent of the labor force and they were locked out of the other uh, many of the other uh, aspects of the labor force because they needed that black labor and, and we're still paying that I was, and we still do it. I mean, we just do it by licensing fees and other such things that we know that black people can't come up with. No, because you need capital. How much black how much capital do you, I have? A, I have a, yep. the Forbes diagram. So people tell me that we're just one America. We're just one America. Now, that blue line is white America. They're, they're coming in at what? Like 100 and the median is at 100 and... 122,000. 122,000. Let the people see. Go ahead and cover my, cover my head. Yeah. 122,000. Um... Median, and we're coming in at about 1,000. Yeah, right now, those are projections. Uh, right now, we're probably at... Okay, so right now, that's right. Uh, in 2000, right before 2010, we were at 10,200 uh, to compare to 161,000. Right, that, those are white people. White people are at 161 in 2010. We were at 10,000. And we are projected numbers. to drop. We're projected to drop. This is the deal. We're projected to drop, and now we're at about 10. What are we? Uh, we are five. We got about five grand. Now, these are generous numbers. I've seen numbers that say we're worse. And I saw in Boston, they're $8. And the median black family is worth $8. Wow. Yeah, $8. It <laughs> is really, bean town. You're, you're, a, you're, you're eating beans. <laughs> yeah, you're not used to anybody when you're only worth $8. Um, so the median black family is worth uh, 12. It is literally 
twelve hundred dollars. So that's if you liquidate everything. And I've seen numbers that are worse. This is when the, and this is the United States, probably worse in Athens. That's if you liquidate everything. The median white family is hanging in over a hundred thousand dollars. So if you're hanging, so you don't have any money in your network, is what that happened. And understand what these lines mean. When the white line is forecasted up, and the black line is forecasting down, that means we are not in one America. We do not have a shared fate. There is no shared fate. That's what that means. A one America looks like one purple line. <laughs> Where we're all, <laughs> we're all like, we're, yeah. Or at least like, end, like trending the same way. I'm pretty sure that those, by those numbers, you can't pay the average bond in this bond. town. No, you can't pay the bond. Unless you're white, in which case you can pay a bond. And you're certainly not affording a lawyer. Yeah. Not a private one. You're probably a public defender with a stack of uh, cases the size of my head. You know, I, I noticed that while I was doing some visiting in courts, public defenders are carrying physical files. The DA's office both have laptops. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, the public defender is working two floors. It's her and an intern. The DAs are sitting there quite comfortably in front of their laptops just pulling up files. Yeah, it's good money putting black people in jail. But, like, are we, are, aren't they supposed to have equal access to resources? Like, how is our DA's office has laptops and our public defenders have a stack of folders? Right. So while I close this out, can yeah. you go to the, the chat real quick? Just go to the chat. The, the, oh. yeah. And uh, look for something if, if anyone says anything provocative. All right, so... It's not just the wealth inequality matters. It's all of the ways we have wealth inequality because of black failure, because of the failure to, of the United States to make the black community whole, and because we were locked out of so many of the wealth. Um, like, we were assets. We were things that other people used to make money, so like, we couldn't make money ourselves. Assets don't have property. They're assets. They are the property of someone else. So we need to be honest about uh, our position as black communities in America and what we need to go forward. Now, is anyone in chat? Uh, actually, apparently, prisoners are the largest purchasers of physical stamps. <laughs> yeah, so we're keeping the po postal service up. Man, we shouldn't have to say anything about no Pledge of Allegiance, nothing, because <laughs> we buy stamps. <laughs> Nobody else, everyone else sends email. We buy stamps. <laughs> <laughs> we're keeping the USPS and thank you for USPS in general because if you didn't know they're one of the largest employers of black people good government job USPS unionized anything else from the uh, YouTube chat uh, wow in Columbus South Carolina apparently it costs $269 a month to be monitored to do what to be monitored $200 <laughs> a month to be monitored. $269. Well, no Negroes are just sitting in jail because like, <laughs> people don't want to pay. Yeah. I can't afford it. Negro, just sit, have your bologna sandwich. I'll see you in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody's going to pay $250. I know, very, I know a, a few people who will not pay $250 to be monitored. Like to get their kid out, to get their own kid out to be monitored. Because that's a lot of money. And it, like, that's real money. That's a lot making $8 an hour. Yeah, two hundred. Yeah, that, like, that, that's, a, that's a that's a check. That's, that's a, nope. <laughs> no, because that's someone's rent. That means I could either bail out my kid or pay rent. And like they're saying, like, well, well I so, I, not, that's part of rent. That's part. Of, that's part. Yeah, of, that, that's, like, yeah. That, 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 that's enough of rent that you can't get it. That that's rent in rent controlled areas of the city. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, like that. rent probably, But like that's enough of your rent that you can't like get. Oh yeah, no, no. Two hundred sixty. Two hundred sixty. No, two. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like two hundred fifty dollars. All right. Uh, well, I'll go one more from uh, from from the people. Two hundred fifty dollars a month. That is. Uh, is, that, is that all we got? All right. That's all we got. What's up? Uh, the cost to uh, house prisoners, by the way, uh, in Clark County. Do it's you eighty dollars a day? Right. That's that's a taxpayer cost to house prisoners. But what that is is a redistribution. Right? So what we're talking about is white redistribution, like mediated through black bodies. Right? So that distribution cost goes to a white contractor who gets the phones right, a white contractor who gets the commissary right, a white contractor who, um, I don't know, pays for the judge's fees. So like all of these... Like that $80 is, is just a redistribution mechanism to white entrepreneurs 
but but they spend all that time talking about fiscal responsibility. Yeah. So for thirty dollars, missing a thirty dollar payment to your probation officer, you get locked up at eighty dollars a day. Two taxpayers, all right? So that's the life we live. Hope this was educational. I tried to keep it so that one, you could show this to your class. It's only forty four minutes, so you could show this to your class. You could show this to your Bible study or whatever, and then like talk about it afterwards. We're doing really good political education here at the Black Athenians. If you like what I'm doing. Go to www.thefunkyacademic.com. Kick in. I will tell you, a few days ago, we're going hard copy. There's going to be a Black Athenians newsletter that you're going to hear more about. I, I signed for the machine. Um, it's great. It's going to be a physical newsletter, so you're going to be able to get something, get a news, get a newsletter, a monthly newsletter sent to your house, anywhere in these United States. Once you go to the website, and uh, it's going to cost a little bit. But if you support what I'm doing, if you think media matters, and I do, so did Ida B. Wells, think that media does matter, um, please sign up to be a member at you know, $5, $15, $20, $50 a month. Go to thefunkyacademic.com, sign up to be a member. I'm trying to provide a service for you. I'm trying to pull back a lot of curtains because we don't talk about this stuff. Our media is failing us. And so we don't know what to ask our politicians. And we don't know about the prison economy. We don't know how to get that contract. For haircutting, I heard about the, maybe I talked about this. I heard about a haircutting contract in jail, $8 per head, that does not go to a black people. Does that go to a black barber? Yeah. And that's one thing we can do. We can cut hair. We can do that. Not me, obviously, but like I know many black people who will cut your hair in jail. I mean, for the jail, a jail haircut, I can do. I can do a jail haircut. I can do a jail haircut. Do a jail haircut. That I, could that, be a job for black people, but instead, it's another white entrepreneur eating off of our penchant. <laughs> And black barbers can cut white hair too. So the, the hundred or so white people in jail, as opposed to like you know the four or five hundred black people in jail, we could we can eight dollars a hair. oh the math we could, we, could, we could cut hair. Um, that can be a black contractor. So like this is a political economy that still extracts wealth off of black bodies. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. Peace.